assalamu alaikum class so today we are going to discuss the second lecture of biostatistics in our last lecture which was the introductory lecture we have discussed that what is biostatistics and how it differ, uh, differentiates between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics um, that in descriptive statistics the uh, biostatistician only presents the data and in inferential statistics he applied tests of significance and then concludes about the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis um, we have discussed that how uh, from the population sampling is done what are different types of sampling we have discussed that how data is generated and what are different types of data uh, it is divided into primary data and secondary data it is divided into qualitative data and quantitative data and then depending upon the type of data biostatistician further decides that how he has to handle the data so it is important to categorize the data in the initial first step today we will be discussing mostly that how a biostatistician presents data fine so the presentation of data is important because it gives visual impression and uh, it gives a summary of the data and it has uh, the visual presentation gives a more impact uh, of the uh, data in the form of the information so whenever the researcher wants to present his data he wants to draw graphs he wants to draw tables so the uh, um impression is stronger and the uh, uh, attention of the viewers is uh, uh, also taken into account while presenting the data uh, the biostatistician is more concerned the researcher is more concerned that the viewers are interested in the observations which he have made so we will be discussing presentation of data and mostly the presentation of data uh, revolves around the qualitative data although there are certain exceptions but majority of the data which is presented in the form of tables and graphs is the qualitative data and we will be discussing it in detail so uh, for presentation of data we uh, the researcher can make tables he can make charts and diagrams these tables can be simple tables or it can be frequency distribution tables in case of charts and diagrams he has a lot of variety to present his data he can present his data in the form of bar charts histograms pie charts pictogram line diagrams statistical maps etc these charts and diagrams are specifically applied on specific type of data in which we will be discussing in our subsequent slides so moving forward uh, the first presentation is the formation of the simple frequency tables for example a researcher has conducted a research in the bds students and now he wants to uh, describe that how many number of students have participated in his research and to which class they belong to so he has divide uh, he has made a table in which he has uh, told us that there are four classes of bds and this is the number of students who have participated in this research this is a classical example of simple frequency table the these are the categorizations so how will you classify the variable this is qualitative data which is categorical data and this is ordinal data as you can see there is an order starting from the first to fourth year mbbs so qualitative ordinal data is presented here fine okay moving forward uh, we can also make frequency distribution tables by the numbers uh, of tallies uh, for example uh, how do we formulate a tally uh, each tally which consists of four vertical bars and a horizontal bar uh, represent a number of five students so uh, for example the first year bda students in this case 5 10 15 20 20 and 23 students have participated uh, in the research so again descriptive data as you can see it is uh, qualitative data categorical data ordinal data and which shows which is shown by the uh, tally distribution and in tally distribution four students are actually shown by the vertical lines and the fifth one is drawn by the a uh, horizontal line and then there is a uh, comma which indicates that this the, these number of tallies or a group of five tallies represent five number number 
so you can draw your data and represent your data uh, by drawing the tally distribution uh, in the frequency tables as well another example is uh, that you can make uh, you can present frequencies you can find out the percentages and then you can find out the cumulative percentages uh, in the presentation of data for example a, a researcher has collected the blood pressure of the patients who are coming uh, to the tertiary care hospital uh, opd and he has distributed the data into categorical data as you can see that he has done categorization he uh, has divided the categories into below he has taken systolic blood pressure so he has taken the category of below 100 100 to 120 121 to 140 141 to 160 and above 160 categories he has not taken diastolic blood pressure into consideration and he has made categories so this is qualitative data categorical data and again ordinal data fine so uh, this is the number of patients who have presented with this systolic blood pressure so by looking into it you can see that majority of the participants which were 24 had the blood pressure between a uh, systolic blood pressure of between 121 to 140 millimeters of mercury so till here you know that this is a frequency table in which on the left side you have shown the variables and on the right side of the column you have shown the frequency of the participants with this uh, variable and another column can be drawn which shows the relative frequency and relative frequency means now you are uh, calculating the uh, percentage so how do you calculate the percentage uh, this uh, frequency divided by the total number of participants who have participated in this research multiplied by 100 which will make the relative frequency which is actually the percentage so this makes the highest percentage means 40 percent of the participants had systolic blood pressure between 121 to 140 millimeters of mercury then we have another column in the uh, frequency table which is known as cumulative relative frequency and in cumulative relative frequency with each um, horizontal uh, row you have to add the frequency in the ab uh, above row for example uh, if you will say that there were six participants whose systolic blood pressure was below 100 millimeters of mercury and they constituted only 10 percent of the participants so it will be only 10 percent but when you will go to the next column in which you will say that the there were nine participants whose systolic blood pressure was between 100 to 120 millimeters of mercury which constituted about 15 percent but this 15 percent will be added into this 10 percent and the cumulative relative frequency will be 0 0.25 which is 25 percent so you can say easily that 25 percent of the participants has blood pressure systolic blood pressure of less than 120 millimeters of mercury but when you take the systolic blood pressure of 121 to 140 millimeters of mercury here the relative frequency was 40 you will add this 40 percent into 25 percent and it will make 65 percent of the participants it means you will say that 65 when you take the blood pressure of uh, less than 140 millimeters of mercury more uh, 65 percent of the participants had this blood pressure systolic blood pressure of less than 140 millimeters of mercury so in cumulative relative frequency when you go below in the column every frequency relative frequency which is shown into the column has is now included and ultimately in the last row you will come up to the percentage of the 100 percent in presentation of cumulative relative frequency a very comprehensive data presentation beautifully uh, presented and in majority of the journals when you will look into the results this is the format which is uh, followed by majority of the uh, researchers to present their data now uh, going towards the um, other type of presentation we all know about the contingency table 
we all know about two by two table construction which is also presented by this presentation two by two tables in which we all know that diseased and a no disease status is put into the rows and exposure status and non exposure status is pro, uh, uh, sorry disease status and non disease status is put into the columns and this uh, exposed and non exposed status is put into the rows we formulate four columns and four rows we make row total we make column total and then we make grand total and we all know that these types of tables are generated when we are conducting the uh, cohort studies case control studies uh, when we are conducting the experimental studies even if we are uh, trying to formulate our hypothesis in analytical cross sectional surveys we generate two by two tables which are very very important uh, for biostatisticians and for epidemiologists another type of example in which we have analysis which is known as multivariate tables uh, in multivariate tables what do we do that uh, we compare the um, p values and p values are generated after the application of the tests of significance for example uh, this is the um, these are the variables and which are actually related with the development of let's suppose breast cancer fine so uh, the researcher wants to present that, that there were two categories of age less than 50 years and more than 50 years and when the relative risk was calculated to assess the association between the development of breast cancer then it was seen that relative risk was more in the older age group so as the age advances the relative risk of having breast cancer increases in the women so this is uh, you can see at the table and by looking at the table you can assess that the, yes this was a cohort study because in which the relative risk is calculated fine so uh, going further the chi square test of significance is applied and p values are generated uh, we will uh, be discussing p values in detail and i will tell you how do we interpret uh, p values find in our subsequent lecture then uh, there are stages uh, that with the there are multiple uh, number of people who present with different stages and you can see that the stage 3 and stage 4 the uh, relative risk is 6.6 it means the majority of the participants present with stage 3 and stage 4 in case of breast cancer and again the chi square test p value the chi square value and p values are generated and they are shown so all the variables which can affect the breast cancer and its assessment and its presentation they are presented in this data and this particular column which shows the univariate means every individual variable is assessed with the development of breast cancer but in multivariate analysis we uh, compare all the results simultaneously and we find out the associations between all these variables and we will be discussing them in our next lectures that how the univariate analysis differs from the multivariate analysis and how p values are compared from univariate analysis and multivariate analysis but this was just to show that this is another type of uh, presentation of data in which the researcher represents the um relative risk he presents the chi square values he presents with the p values he can do multiple observations and multiple analysis in the same table moving forward with the charts there are different types of presentations with which the charts can be made and again qualitative data is presented best Uh, in the bar charts for example if a person wants to show what is the number of uh, students who have admitted uh, in the first year bds each year then the year will be uh, placed on the x axis and the number of students will be placed on the y axis and simply by the length of the graph the number is reflected and the percentage is reflected and you can interpret it but the bar charts can further be subdivided into component bar charts and multiple bar charts these are the example of component bar charts for example you can see that these are the number of years and the number of total number of students is further subdivided into male and female students the length of the blue 
chart represents the students who are male and the pink chart shows the number of students who are females. So by looking at the data, you can see that the maximum number were admitted in the year three. And uh, in that particular year, the number of female students was relatively much higher as compared to the male students. So in a single bar, you are presenting the data of multiple components. This is known as component bar chart. Another example of bar chart can be multiple bar charts in which the bar charts are combined together. For example, if you want to conduct a study in which you want to see that what is the prevalence of hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus and HIV virus um, present in the healthy blood donors in one year. So what will you do? You will divide the year into four. Uh, quarters and you will do categorization. Let's suppose uh, we label uh, hepatitis B with yellow, hepatitis C with black color and HIV with the green color. Then we can uh, um, we can see that in first quarter, this is the number of patients presented with hepatitis B. This is the number of patients with hepatitis C and this is the number of patients with, hepatitis, uh, with human immunodeficiency virus. And then in second quarter and third quarter, we can do comparisons in this one quarter all the three datas are presented and we can do comparative analysis of all the three um, diseases as well as we can do the comparison of the three quarters uh, that how the patient are presenting so if the multiple bar uh, multiple variables are combined together and their bar charts are put together to interpret the data this is known as multiple bar chart the multiple bar chart can be converted into component bar chart as well and the component bar chart can be converted into multiple bar charts. It totally depends upon the uh, researcher's wish that how he or she wants to present the data. Fine. So uh, moving forward, histogram. Histogram is a type of, it's a subtype of bar chart. Rather, I must not say that it's a bar chart. Actually, histogram is drawn on the quantitative data but the bar chart is drawn on the qualitative data as you can see that there is no gap between the uh, bars of the histogram it means that it is a continuous data for example the scores on the final exam of students uh, has been estimated and this these scores can range from uh, 0 to 20, it can be 21, it can be 20.5. So there is no space left between the two bars. This is known as histogram. Only the quantitative data for the quantitative data, for the continuous data, histograms are uh, generated. They are different from bar graphs. The bar graphs cannot be drawn on the quantitative data. Uh, they are drawn on the qualitative data fine so my next next question to you is is this a histogram you have to give me an answer okay now uh, what do we do for uh, uh, the same data which is quantitative data continuous data on which we have drawn histogram we can um, find out the middle values of each a uh, bar of the histogram these are the central values and we we can combine them with the, each other with the help of a line which is known as frequency polygon so frequency polygon is a type of curve which is drawn by joining the center points of the histogram this is again based on the presentation of quantitative continuous data you cannot present frequency polygon in the form of qualitative data fine okay this frequency polygon can be presented by retaining the bars and sometimes the researcher opts to remove the bars and just presents the frequency curve this is the data which is presented for the qualitative data in which the frequency curve is shown and which shows the attendance of BDS students in a week and the week's time is presented in the form of the days of the week 
and the number of attendance is shown the percentages is shown uh, uh, on the y variable and the frequency curve shows that how the percentage has increased in a specific day and then it declines again so this is one of the presentation which can be drawn for the uh, qualitative data as well then we have cumulative frequency tables and in cumulative frequency tables you all know that the number of uh, frequencies are added up when you are dealing with cumulative frequency and cumulative pre uh, presentation for example for the number of, of days one to two the numbers of cards sold were seven and on third and fourth day they were nine but then the end of fourth the seven plus nine there were 16 uh, cards which were sold so cumulative frequency the column continuously increases and it reaches up to the maximum uh, at the end for cumulative uh, frequency we can also draw a um, table in which the cumulative frequencies are taken on the right side of the pregnant uh, right side of the um, uh, graph which is the y axis and the x axis shows the uh, independent variable and the y axis shows the dependent variable and the cumulative frequency is shown with a continuous rise till it reaches maximum this presentation in which we are dealing with the cumulative frequencies is known as an augur this is again another visual presentation usually done for qualitative data we have another presentation which is known as pie chart and in pie chart again the qualitative data is presented and the parts of the pie represent different percentages and different uh, frequencies they are properly labeled then uh, they are color coded and each color coding represents different variables it's a very very favorite uh, presentation of research and most of the research articles you really present the data in the form of pie charts and bar charts and if they are dealing with the quantitative data they want to present their data with the histograms and the lined uh, polygons frequency polygons which are presented if the researcher wants to present with the cumulative frequency then augive is drawn fine line diagram uh, presents the uh, data uh, as it passes through the different time phases for example if we have the time on the x axis and we have data on the uh, y axis and the variation of the data is presented in respect to the time this is known as line diagram a very beautiful presentation if the researcher wants to present the change in prevalence or incidence of disease over a period of time we have another type of presentation which is box and whisker presentation this is done for the quantitative data and uh, how do we deal with it is that the center point uh, of the box represents the median value the uh, end bar shows the minimum value this shows the maximum value and the quartile range shows the first 25 percent of the sample is presented here the uh, 50 percent is presented here 75 percent is presented here and 100 percent is presented here so this is the box and whisker plot which represents the uh, quantitative data as well we have uh, multiple types of box and whiskers plot which show different samples and their variations when a researcher is dealing with a large number of samples and he wants to compare the means and he wants to compare the interquartile range uh, of those samples with each other then he can draw box uh, and whisker plot for each sample and he can compare them that where the median lies and what was the range and how they differ from each other we have another presentation which is known as pictogram and in pictogram each picture uh, gives a specific proportion for example um, uh, for example this is the presentation of the crop which was originated and uh, let's suppose that uh, each one picture uh, of one fruit represents the 100 acres production so you will give the key that what does one picture present and you can count out uh, count out that how many of acres 100 acres production has been done in this particular field 
choice of favorite color by 100 student you have seen that this particular face uh, stands for four students and you can see that uh, if you ask that uh, what was your favorite color and the blue was answered by four into four uh, four plus four is eight and um, 12 and 16 and 20 it means 20 students uh, preferred blue color the half color uh, the half of the face represents the 50% of the presentation, it means that if the half face is presented, it means it is pre it is presenting two students. So, pictogram uh, can be drawn and each part component of the pictogram, uh, the key should be uh, placed in the pictogram that how the researcher has coded this pictogram to present the data. Then we have statistical maps presentation and this is the map which shows the prevalence of the polio and uh, you can see that there are certain areas in Pakistan in which the prevalence is uh, still high uh, of polio cases which can be presented by the uh, color coding and you can show that the color coding red color shows that the number of cases are increasing and yellow color shows decreasing and Blue color means that the number of cases are uh, static. So you can draw statistical maps. I have given you multiple examples of spot maps which indicate the prevalence of disease. We have scatter diagram presentation uh, which we have discussed in the uh, when we were discussing the um, causation and association in which I told you that the, initially the researcher decides that whether there is an association between the two variables, whether if one variable is increasing, the other variable is also increasing or not. For example, if a researcher wants to see that with the increasing number uh, which are gained by students in math, um, is there any gain in the number of marks which they get in size? So there is a positive correlation. He saw that uh, uh, if a uh, particular student is good in securing good marks and maths it means he will automatically secure good marks and sciences so the scatter diagram shows the variation between association between the two variables whether it is a positive association if one is increasing the other is increasing or it may be a negative association and there may be no um, association and the, the strong positive correlation is represented by plus one and uh, no correlation is represented by zero and negative correlation is represented by minus one and the values between plus one zero and minus one represents the strong positive and strong negative and weak positive and weak negative correlations so this is the interpretation of the scatter diagram the data between the two variables to show their association that whether one is increasing the other one is increasing or not or it is decreasing or there is no change in the other uh, variable can be presented with the help of a scatter plot. So this makes an end of the data presentation. There are multiple other types of data presentation as well. And as the science is advancing, other types of uh, presentations are being emerged and uh, different types of um, uh, presentations are made uh, by the researcher to have a greater impact. The most common ones have been discussed, which are included in your syllabus. So if you have any questions, I'm available. You can contact me. Thank you so much. Your assignment should be submitted within 10 minutes of finishing this lecture. Thank you so much.